we will start covering chapter two in the textbook by Calvin Hu, and that deals with the motion of charge carriers inside of a semiconductor. And the reason this needs to be covered is so that we can model current density and electron and hole movement. The outcome is going to be expressions for current density for electron and hole mobility, which, which affect the speed of a, of a device's operation. So let's begin by looking at a uh, channel of su semiconductor. There are two electrodes placed on it, one positive, one negative, and there are electrons inside. We will consider the electrons and negative charge carriers. There's an electric field pointing to the left because the electric field goes from the positive to the negative terminal. Direction is indicated here, the positive x direction is to the right. And so, you know, the electron being negative is going to be attracted to the positive terminal. So it's going to move to the right under the influence of the electric field. And that's the velocity V. So just keep those things in mind and let's write an equation of motion for this electron. So an equation of motion is what you get from Newton's second law. So the sum of the forces is ma, m sub n, that's the conductivity effective mass of electrons, and acceleration. And instead of writing a, we'll write v dot for acceleration, dot being the time derivative. What forces are there? What do you need in order to uh, write out the forces? A free body diagram, so we have that here. Um, there is the, definitely the electric force tugging the electron to the right. As the electron moves through media, it experiences a drag force that is always in the opposite direction of movement, so it's to the left. And the, the source of drag force is scattering of the electron off of, we'll just say atoms for now, and we will start talking about phonons, which is actually the vibrational states of atoms later. Let's think of the atoms in place as scattering centers. So those are the two forces. They have to add up to ma, the mv dot. So write them out. Electric force is charge times electric field, and it has to be going in the positive direction. I'll write it this way, uh, minus qe. And why the minus? Because the electric field is pointing in the negative direction. So even though I, I've vectorized this, it's not a complicated vectorization because it is a one-dimensional problem. But you just have to keep in mind certain things. The, the quantity E is in the negative direction, and you multiply that by the charge to get the force in the, the positive direction. So E is a negative number. The drag force is, is the next thing we need to figure out, and there is an expression that we're going to borrow from somewhere else for that. We're going to use this idea, Stokes' Law. And you can go back to an introductory physics textbook and read up on Stokes' Law, which is usually presented in the context of a particle moving through fluids. It's appropriate in very non-turbulent flow. We're going to make this argument that the drag force is proportional to the velocity, which actually, in the case of this case, makes a lot of sense since the source of the drag force is scattering and if you double the speed of an electron, you'll double the rate that it encounters scattering obstacles. So this, this is a common sense argument to some extent. Uh, and the minus sign uh, is there because the for drag force is always in the opposite direction of motion. There is a proportionality constant, and we're going to use this. It, it's, we're going to use the mass of the, like, the charge carrier, the conductivity effective mass, divided by a mysterious parameter called tau which I'm going to argue right now is, is the mean time between collisions. Uh, the purpose of that argument will become a little more clear when we solve for the terminal velocity. Um, but that's what the drag force is from Stokes' law. So tau is a new, new parameter, a new variable we have to think about now. It's the mean collision relaxation time, which you can just think of as the average time between collisions. The electrons moving along through the semiconductor and it occasionally collides with a, with, with a phonon, with a, the vibration mode of an atom. And then it goes a little long, farther, collides again. The average time between all those collisions is tau. Let's put it all together then. Put this expression into Newton's second law. And we have, uh, I'll take out the vector signs. And we have uh, uh, just the one, because one dimensional, we have the statement. 
minus QE, remembering that the electric field points to the left, and therefore minus QE points to the right. And you have this expression that, that we developed for drag force, minus m sub n over tau times velocity equals ma, mass times acceleration. That's our equation of motion. That's, that's what this is called. It doesn't say it here, but probably should. It's the equation of motion for an electron or for a charge carrier moving through the semiconductor. Yeah. Now, there are going to be two important cases that will tell us a lot. Let's go through them. In the first case, there's the, the voltage is turned off. There isn't any. And if there's no voltage, then there's no electric field. Make sense? Without an applied electric field, set that equal to zero, we have a simpler differential equation that, that we can solve. And you know how to solve that one. So it just comes out to this. The masses cancel too. And you just have V dot equals minus V over tau. You know how to solve that equation. You know that's exponential. And, that, and with the minus sign, it's an exponential decay. And so we'll just write it as, as some constant times e to the minus t over tau. What's the constant? It's whatever v is when t time equals zero. In silicon, the electron mean scattering electro relaxation time is about 10 to the minus 13 seconds. That's a good thing to keep in mind. In fact, there are a few problems in the textbook that uh, require you to use that fact. So that's pure silicon. You can change that scattering relaxation time by adding dopants, which, again, makes sense. If you add opportunities to scatter, you're going to decrease the time between scattering events. And so increasing doping decreases the scattering relaxation time. And then finally, the most important thing is that holes and electrons will experience a different scattering relaxation time. And so we'll de depict them at tau sub p for holes and tau sub n for electrons. That's the case of no electric field. Look at the expression and think about what's happening. The electron moves for a little bit, it scatters, and, and its, its velocity uh, uh, decays because there's no electric field uh, to, to drive it. Yeah, of course, all of this is, is keep leaving out the thermal velocity, which is maybe on top of this velocity. This is uh, velocity due to uh, the items in the equation of motion. Right. Um, second situation is when the acceleration is zero. That does happen. And, and this actually, in my opinion, this is why in an introductory physics course, we talk about terminal velocity of falling objects. So that when we get to this in this course, it's the same problem. When something is accelerating, its speed is changing, but if it keeps accelerate, if the acceleration depends on speed, you will eventually reach a velocity where the acceleration has gone to zero, at which point you are at terminal velocity. And in the case of uh, conduction charge carriers, it's referred to as the drift velocity, V sub d. And at which point you are at steady state. So let's rewrite the equation of motion with ex zero acceleration. And the nice thing about solving for terminal velocity in a with a linear equation of motion is that you don't have any calculus to do because you've just set acceleration to zero and you just solve. This is important. This thing in parentheses is Q charge of the as this 1.6 times m s 19 coulombs. Tau, the scattering relaxation time, I did not decorate it. I could have put a sub n, should have put a sub n on there. Over the conductivity effective mass. Okay. And th what's in the parentheses goes by a special name because look at the structure of this. The terminal velocity equals constant stuff, that's the constant, times the electric field. So if you double the electric field, you will double the terminal velocity. Triple it, you'll triple the terminal velocity. The proportionality constant is called the electron mobility. And so Q times the electron scattering relaxation time over the electron effective mass is the electron mobility. And just to keep in mind that is the definition then of mobility, let take, take this expression uh, apart a little bit, divide through electric field. V, the drift velocity divided by the electric field is that constant. Mobility is always a positive number. To avoid confusion with this minus sign here, which belongs here for an electron because the electrons go in the opposite direction of electric fields, the mobility is then we'll just, just use the absolute value signs on, on these Vs and Es to, for the definition of mobility.
So that's coulombs, seconds over kilograms. But if I use the definitional form, it's meters per second over volts per meter. And so either one is valid, coulomb second per kilogram or meters squared per volt second. And, and our textbook has a preference. Engineers have a preference for this expression because volts are a lot more practical than coulombs. <laughs> so, so we will, uh, we will uh, use the, the practical uh, uh, set of units there. That's the idea of mobility, a very important quantity that we're going to have going forward. So we, we've introduced uh, three quantities in this, this little lecture right here. Uh, the mean relaxation, scat scattering relaxation time, tau, the electron mobility, mu, and the drift velocity, uh, V drift. So those are three new quantities. They're very important. Read the first two sections of chapter two as many times as you need in order to understand those two quantities. Let's put some numbers on them and, and at the same time consider the, the distinction between electrons and holes. So the same expression for electrons and holes, we can go through the same analysis all over again, just, just change mass of the electron to mass of a hole. And M sub n, remember, is the mass of electrons. M sub h is the mass of holes. We're using that notation in our textbook. But sub h is on everything for holes. And just, just the thing that you really need to remember, first of all, that mobility is proportional to scattering relaxation time. It's good to remember mobility is q tau over m uh, as well. Yeah, some numbers for different materials, so electron mobility and hole mobility and, and silicon, germanium, gallium arsenide, and indium arsenide. And just take a minute to inspect these numbers. And a few things that are really important to, to solidify in your mind. The most important thing to keep, in, to keep straight in your mind is that hole mobility is always less than electron mobility. And in fact, it can be a lot less, right? I mean, quite, quite a bit less. And in the case of gallium arsenide, what is that? 5%. Hole mobility is 5% that of, of uh, electron mobility. And, and something else uh, I got to mention is that the mobility varies with doping. Uh, so uh, these are pure materials. And then another thing is that uh, look at indium arsenide. Gallium arsenide and in indium arsenide are referred to as high mobility semiconductors. Gallium arsenide is used commercially in mod FETs, which I've mentioned to you once before. I'm mentioning it to you now, and we're going to cover it in detail. I think it's in chapter six. There are always emerging materials and new developments, and the uh, latest development is with indium arsenide. And so I found this, this uh, report from 2018, from just two, a couple of years ago, uh, work at UC Santa Barbara on, on high electron mobility channels, high speed channels for high speed devices. And in that case, uh, they put this indium arsenide channel in between an indium gallium arsenide uh, channel and, and, and a, la a layer of indium phosphide. And so, uh, so they're able to have this, this uh, channel with extremely high electron speed. And you know, what, what they do is they make it also make, keep it very pure, pure indium arsenide, and they, they can dope the other layers in order to generate a lot of electron carriers. So that's an introduction to those important concepts of mobility, drift speed and, and mean relaxation time. And when we come back, we will talk about current density.